Hey guys, it's Eric from Yucatec, and for today's video, we're covering SD card speed classes, and more importantly, why do they matter? So, before we begin, what are they to begin with? For any card, users should be able to notice that there's gonna be a subtle C, U, or V symbol somewhere on the label. This labeling tells users what kind of speed classes the memory card or specifically the SD card runs on. And here's another small fun fact. The SD in micro SD or SD cards means secure digital, in case you never knew what it meant. Anyway, manufacturers like SanDisk, Lexar, and Kingston to name a few, use these classes to rate memory cards. Similarly, these can also help you guys pick out the right memory card for various devices. So without further ado, Let's dive right in. First off, we have the C symbol, which is simply known as the speed class. It has four ratings, including C2, C4, C6, and C10. C2 is the slowest speed class, while C10 is rated as the highest. It's a given that devices get more resource intensive over the years, so higher speeds and capabilities are very much necessary for these devices. Because of this, hardly anyone uses memory cards that range from C2 to C6 nowadays. In other words, C10 is a pretty good benchmark overall. In detail though, C2 rated cards are only good for standard videos. Meanwhile, C4 rated cards can be used for up to full HD or HD videos, while C10 rated memory cards are used for standard videos, full HD or HD videos, and even 4K videos. For reference, C6 cards can also be used for these purposes. As mentioned though, devices nowadays need higher speeds and capabilities since they record a lot larger file sizes. And as you can tell, file sizes are becoming a lot larger. So you guys might as well go for C10 rated memory cards if you have the option of doing so. Next, we have the U symbol, which is known as the ultra high speed or UHS speed class. This speed class comes with two ratings, U1 and U3. U1 cards can be reused to record videos up to 4K resolution. Meanwhile, U3 cards can be used for up to 8K resolution. The biggest thing to take note of here is that U3 cards have a guaranteed minimum write speed of 30 megabytes per second. This is nice to keep in mind for viewers who might want to get into filming or other similar interests like photography and you have a very fast camera. Generally speaking though, the UHS speed class is used more often than the speed class cards. For context, most high-end cameras require at least a U3 rated memory card for recording high resolution videos. And you can try them out yourselves if you have a slow SD card and you put it into a modern camera like an A7. Now, another reason why U1 and U3 rated memory cards are used more often is that they use one of two UHS bus interfaces. UHS-1 and UHS-2. Most high-end memory cards also make use of UHS-3. Collectively, these suggest theoretical maximum read and write speeds. Users can also tell if a card is UHS-1, 2, or 3 because there are usually more pins on the back. Now, if you're not looking at it from the back, users can find this via a Roman numeral symbol on the front of the card. I should also note that U3 rated cards have their own minimum sustained write speed of 30 megabytes per second. Speaking of, this is going to sound weird, but both U1 and U3 cards can use UHS-1. However, both of these aren't always compatible with UHS-2. For instance, a UHS-1 U3 rated card has a guaranteed write speed of 30 megabytes per second. However, it also has a potential read and write speed of up to 104 megabytes per second. Granted, it was used with a device that supports a UHS-1 bus interface. Meanwhile, a UHS-2 compatible card has the potential to read and write speeds of up to 312 megabytes per second. UHS bus interfaces are also backwards compatible, so users can use UHS-2 cards and UHS-1 supported devices. However, you won't get the UHS-2 card's full benefit. It will default to the lower specs of a UHS-1 card. Long story short, the card and bus interface both have to be fully compatible to get the full speed that the card is capable of. This is the same for UHS-3 supported cards and devices. Next, we have the V symbol or the video speed class. This was made to enable recording with higher resolution video as the world continued to adopt 4K or even 8K video recording as the new norm. 
It also supports features like multiple video streams, 360-degree capture, VR content, and up to 8K resolution video, as mentioned earlier. The video speed class does have five ratings, which are V6, V10, V30, V60, and V90. This rating is unique because it can use both UHS-1 and UHS-2 bus interfaces. However, the UHS-1 interface can only support V6 to V30 speed class rated memory cards. Users can use memory cards in this class for devices like drones, 360-degree cameras, action cameras, and even entry-level professional-grade cameras. Lastly, we have the Application Performance class, or APC. This indicates a card's ability to handle random read and write speeds for running applications on devices like smartphones. As such, these are mainly for smartphones, tablets, and other similar devices. If a user has a good card that supports APC, running apps directly from the card will yield good performance as compared to using a generic standard SD card. APC cards are classified into two. A1 and A2 cards, with the latter offering better numbers performance-wise. In details, A1 cards are considered entry-level hardware for running apps to meet minimum requirement. Meanwhile, A2 offers better numbers in command queuing, caching, and multitasking. Generally, Android devices in particular can use SD cards with an A2 rating better. This is notable for those who wish to run a heavy app straight from the memory card instead of being directly installed into the device. So in summary, Speed class cards are generally good if users don't mind speeds of around 10 megabytes per second. Simply think of it as something for storage. UHS speed class cards are more commonly used for general camera work since it supports up to 8K videos with a drawback of speeds of up to a minimum of 30 megabytes per second. As for the video speed class, it's made for devices that support high resolution videos with their own recording features like drones, action cameras, and as I mentioned earlier, even entry-level professional cameras. Meanwhile, APC cards are meant for smartphones and tablets, preferably Android devices. Users can make the most of it should they want to run a resource-heavy app straight from the memory card. And that should be it for the SD card speed classes or naming conventions. We should also note that using a higher rated card that goes beyond the speed class requirement for a device is all right as most of them are backward compatibles either way. But obviously, users won't get the full benefit of the higher speed class if your device only supports a card that with a lower speed class. But at least you can think of it as future proofing your gear. But hey, what do you guys think of this explainer with SD cards and their speeds? Let us know what you think in the comment section below. And of course, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to find out more and learn new things with the Yuga Tech channel. Don't forget to visit our social media platforms at Facebook, Instagram, X, and TikTok. And of course, visit the Yuga Tech website for the latest tech news and reviews. Once again, this has been Ase, and I'll see you guys in the next one. And yes, you do need this to record stuff. Jane.